डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी नमस्कार माय नेम इज डॉक्टर रीना वैष्णव असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश एट डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू अवर लास्ट सेशन एलिजाबेथन एज पार्ट टू दिस यूनिट आई हैव टेकन फ्रॉम सेकेंड ईयर बैचलर ऑफ आर्ट्स एस वाई बी ए ई एन जी एम टू जीरो थ्री द नेम ऑफ द पेपर इज हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर बिफोर आई कंटिन्यू दिस सेशन लेट मी रिवाइंड द लास्ट सेशन रिगार्डिंग एलिजाबेथ नेज इन लास्ट सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट वाई डू वी स्टडी हिस्ट्री वाई डू वी स्टडी history of english literature there are any methods to study history of english literature and how it helps us to understand history of english literature right so let me rewind it again why do we study history because whatever happened in the past we acknowledge that knowledge also the mistake what happened in the past we normally don't repeat it in our present days we all are student of english literature the next question comes in our mind why do we study history of english literature because through the study of history of english literature we understand literary philosophical movements we can understand all the comprehension parts of all art forms now the next thing we have discussed four methods biographical method historical method literary method and linguistic method through this method we can understand history of english literature in a better way how the first biographical method if we know the author's background his or her biographical experiences from which circumstances he or she has passed through we can understand their work in a better way because we all know literature is the mirror of life literature is the reflection of author's own life in some way right historical method how through historical method we can understand history of english literature so if we know like in 1558 there is a accession of queen elizabeth to the throne of england we know in 1588 spanish armada happened and england won the battle so if we have the idea of this chronologically things or we can say the historical movements what happened in the past we can have a more clear idea about that particular work and that particular work themes this work is regarding about exactly what what are the main meaning of this particular work and third method it was literary method we all know like shakespeare is a master of blank verse right chaucer gives his most prominent work in rhyme royal so what kind of literary rhymes happen used by the writers in the past and what kind of literary rhymes our present writers are using so through the literary method we can understand history of english literature and the fourth method it is language method 
linguistic method you can say. So, how linguistic method it is useful to understand it. So, we also explained in our last session like in linguistic method in classic era or in a Chaucer period what kind of the word used in the Chaucer age we normally do not repeat it or we do not use it in our present day like thou now we use as a you. So, this biographical, historical, literary and linguistic these are the four methods to understand history of English literature. So, these are the things we have discussed in our past session. We have also discussed chronology till the Elizabethan age, historical chronology till the Elizabethan age. Like in 24th March 1603, Elizabeth was died, right? And the accession of King James I. Now, in this session, what we are going to discuss? We are continuing the Elizabethan age. But in this session, we are going to discuss political environment of the Elizabethan age or you can say political environment during the Elizabethan age. Next aspect we are going to see social scenario of the age and the last part we are going to discuss about literary features of Elizabethan age. Before I go into the content, in a simple manner, I am going to explain you political environments during the Elizabethan age. We all know like Queen Elizabeth, was the supreme power, no rule, no law uh, that parliament can pass without her consent. During this uh, reign of Queen Elizabeth, the main part officially bodies that divided into two parts. The first part is Privy Council and the second part is the Parliament. During the Privy Council, during the reign of Queen Mary, uh, we knew that uh, at the time of Queen Mary, there were so many members in Privy Council. But Queen Elizabeth knew that uh, more people can cause the problem, right? Much people can uh, generate the more issues and more problems. So, what she did? She made limited members of a privy council. So, during the reign of Elizabeth, in privy council, there were mainly 13 members only. And what is the main function of this privy council members? So, they normally give suggestions and advice to Queen Elizabeth in political decisions. So, this is the main work of privy council. Other part is the parliament. These are the two official political bodies you can say, right? Parliament also divided into two houses. The first house is called the house of upper and the second house is called the house of common. The house of upper mainly include aristocrats and bishops, right? And the house of commons, th this house mainly included with common peoples. How common peoples, they just uh, get involved in the house of commons? There were election. So, through the election, whosoever just elected, they were the members of the house of commons right so for the house of common people there were an election but the main thing you have to keep in mind during the reign of queen elizabeth there were no right to vote for females it means females are not allowed to give a vote only men were allowed okay so these are the main houses so 
if you uh, if anyone ask you can you explain me the political environment during the elizabethan age so in simply manner you can say in queen elizabeth era there were mainly two official bodies the first one is privy council the second one is the parliament in privy council there were the mainly 13 members and they just give advice to elizabeth to uh, to take some important political decisions right and in the parliament it was divided into mainly two official bodies or two houses the house of upper and the house of common upper house mainly include aristocrats and bishops and the house of common the common people were elected by election what is the main function or what is the main aim of the parliament house so they just pass the fund for the elizabethan parliament fund okay so they they mainly the main work of this uh, member is to pass the grant okay so this is the parliament and this is the privy council so this is the political environment during the elizabethan age now in the next part we are going to discuss about social scenario during the elizabethan age in social scenario mainly we are going to discuss renaissance mainly we are going to discuss about renaissance me the first we are going to discuss renaissance after that mainly we are going to discuss the important events which are related to the movement of renaissance okay in social scenario after that we are going to discuss literary features of the elizabethan age in literary features we are going to discuss mainly um elizabethan prose prose mainly divided into two parts fiction and non fiction in fiction we can include love marriage chivalry right courage these are the themes of a fiction during the elizabethan age and in non fiction we are going to discuss the uh, mainly pamphlets were written during this particular age religious uh, a uh, writing we can include it in a non fiction part right after that we are going to discuss mainly elizabethan poetry the spenserian stanza spenserian sonnet how we can divide it how we can uh, you know uh, we can understand this is the spenserian stanza right and at the end we are going to discuss elizabethan drama so in this session we are going to discuss a uh, political environment we have already discussed and now we are going to discuss about social scenario of the elizabethan age or during the elizabethan age of the elizabethan age i have already mentioned in the beginning speech like uh, what we are going to discuss mainly we are going to discuss about a renaissance the movement of renaissance was exactly it is after that we are going to discuss about the important events which are accumulated with the renaissance movement right then we will see growth of science nationalism individualism or you can say humanism etc right so let me start the slide of social scenario of the elizabethan age what exactly renaissance so the renaissance is a french word mainly and its meaning is rebirth or you can say revival or a reawakening mainly it is called reawakening the renaissance movement it started in italy around 14th century revival of ancient classical mythology literature painting sculpture and architecture especially in literature how can we say that it is a renaissance a period 
So, especially in English literature, we are following uh, who are the mainly pioneers of the uh, Renaissance period. So, especially in literature, Petrarch and Boccaccio are the main pioneers of this revival of the classical literature. Classical literature or you can say humanism also, you can also say individualism too. So, in humanism, it includes all aspects of the study like medicine, philosophy and psychology, right? From Italy, Renaissance spread to Germany, Spain, France, Netherlands and England. So, what is the main exactly this para is going to tell you? This para tells a Renaissance movement, this word specially Renaissance, it's originated from the French word which meaning is rebirth or you can say revival or you can say reawakening. This movement especially started or you can say begin in Italy around 14th century. It is mainly a revival of the ancient classical mythology or literature, painting, sculpture, architecture, whatever happened during that age, we start to reawaken that spirit, right? And especially literature, you can say the work of Petrarch and Boccaccio are the mainly pioneers of the revival of classical literature. From Italy, it started in Italy around 14th century and from Italy to it, it spreads over Germany, Spain, France and Netherlands and as well as England too. There are mainly most, uh, we can say uh, some important events that are associated with Renaissance. The first one is fall of Constantinople in 1453, fall of Constantinople in 1453 and the second one is European invention of printing press. Right? So, these are the most important events which are mainly associated with the Renaissance. Ottoman Empire, mainly how uh, the fall of Constantinople happened. So, Ottoman Empire defeated the Roman Empire and for, that, for this reason what happened? Islam spread in Europe and several Greek and non-Greek intellectuals fled to the city and they migrated particularly mainly where to Italy and many of these refugees took with them the fast uh, you can say riches of ancient art they aware uh, from the ancient art and knowledge and they tried to helping to ignite the renaissance now European inventions of printing press we all know like the first printing press was set up by William Caxton in 1476 and after that uh, the invention of the printing press came into being around you can say 1450 and this Gutenberg of uh, Germany they try to our uh, printing by movable type. What does it mean? It means it is quite advanced method of printing done by movable components and what happened is for that, that handcrafted manuscript was replaced by mass produced books. So, now handwritten work or handcrafted manuscript was replaced by books or you can say mass produced books. So, the first important event associated with the Renaissance is the fall of Constantinople happened in 1453. For this reason, Ottoman Empire defeated the Roman Empire and Islam spread in Europe. Several Greek and non-Greek intellectuals mainly particulated they settled into Italy and they took that ancient art and knowledge into that home. And the second 
print uh, invention of a printing press and just because of the invention of this printing press the handcrafted manuscript was replaced by mass produced book now another social scenario when we uh, see we have to keep in a mind like growth of science exploring and growth of nationalism and patriotic spirit how this thing happened during the age of elizabethan age so the growth of science so in 1400 uh, sorry so in 1543 nicholas copernic argued that the sun is at the center of the universe earlier we all know like earlier um, which theory uh, told us like the our earth is the center do you know yes ptolemaic theory ptolemaic theory mentioned that the earth is the center of the universe but in 1543 nicholas copernic argued that the sun is the center of the universe and just after this invention the discoveries of the planet by kepler and galileo there are the huge vast reasons and rationality became the crucial driving force to find the explanation of human behavior and physiology next point is exploring explore it means we we know like in 1588 1588 england won in against the spanish armada right so after that our uh, main soldiers they start to explore the world so and during that era christopher columbus discovered america in 1492 and up what happened after the discovery of america right in 1588 england won against spanish armada spanish armada so what happened spanish fleet of 130 ships right 130 ships attempted to invade england in 1588 but the english were able to successfully drive them away so england won so due to this spanish armada which happened in 1588 the growth of nationalism the patriotic spirit aroused in the man of england commercial gains individualism and civility commercial gains individualism and civility so these are the uh, another uh, social scene of the elizabethan age in commercial gains you can say in 1600 a charter was granted to merchants for foreign trade individualism it means uh, through the movement of renaissance each and every individual start to think by themselves right so there was emphasis on individualism individualism was a feature of mainly a greek literature and the by the result of this individualism that the renaissance man did not care for the authority who ruled over them they are they were free and they were start to thinking independently and they try to making their own decision so this is the main important aspect of uh, elizabethan age the next one is civility a significant feature of individualism was the insistence of well rounded man right so mainly the civility it means the rise in courtesy and manners we all see like all over europe there was a growth in courtesy they are they know how to accomplish the courtier of renaissance should be able to fence or ride or read and uh, greek language or you can say they re- they can read a latin language too and to organize a siege of a city so in this way the commercial gains individualism and civility these are the main characteristics we can include as a social scenario of the elizabethan age 
and its gender uh, i have mentioned in a beginning like uh, during the reign of uh, elizabethan age who is a female during that era female are not or you can say women are not allowed to give a vote right during the reign of elizabethan age the women were not allowed to stage a play right they are not uh, they are not allowed to participate in the play so gender elizabeth in england was extremely patriarchal right mainly this word husband or father was at the top of hierarchy women did not enjoy too much freedom as compared to men they were maintained silence in public sphere they were instructed to practice chastity gender roles defined in a text the book of common prayer so mainly in gender in this para we have to um, um you know keep in our mind like during the reign of queen elizabeth age women are not allowed to give a vote or you can say women don't have a right to vote and they are not allowed to stage or you can say to stage a play they are not they cannot participate in the play so in a social scenario mainly we can see renaissance period also so what are the key aspects of the social scenario so we can include a renaissance growth of science growth of nationalism as well as commercial gains individualism and civility right now we are going to discuss literary features of elizabethan age so what are the mainly literary features of elizabethan age elizabethan poetry elizabethan prose elizabethan drama i have already mentioned in the beginning like literary prose during this era divided into two parts fiction and non fiction in fiction uh, work uh, we can include the themes like love marriage chivalry courage right and in non fiction we can include pamphlet and religious writings in poetry what kinds of poetry what kind of stanzas as spenserian sonnet how we can uh, identify this is a spenserian stanza or spenserian sonnet in elizabethan drama uh, there are mainly the who, what is the first uh, comedy what is the first tragedy written by whom what are the main characteristics what are the main themes during the elizabethan age that we are going to discuss and literary features of elizabethan age so the first part is prose prose is divided into two parts fiction and non fiction right so fiction mainly the fiction included love marriage honor chivalry courage and courtship right this satires on london life its corruption immortality lack of faith right there are mainly so many kinds of romances like pastoral romance middle class romance and courtly romance and in a non fiction in non fiction mainly there are two writings first one is a pamphlet form and the second one is a religious writing so religious writing and pamphlets we can include it in a non fiction part poetry so during this age during the elizabethan age poetry we can say that this is the golden age variability transience and change become central concern poem contains mainly anxieties regarding contemporary politics monarch and society there are mainly love poems and sonnet introduced by thomas wyatt and thomas sequel there is a mainly two sonnets and shakespearean sonnets when we uh, learn how to identify any sonnet through their rhyme 
you will have a more idea about it like how we can say petrarchan sonnet it is a b b a a b b a c d e c d e so this is mainly a b b a a b b a c d e c d e this is the particularly the rhyme of the scheme if any poem contains this rhyme it is called a petrarchan sonnet and if any poetry if it has a this rhyme a b b a a b b a c d c d e f e f and the last couplet is g g so it considered as a shakespearean sonnet so uh, for poetry elizabethan is considered the golden age right mainly they are uh, written uh, so many types of uh, poems but love poems are the prominent uh, theme during this particular age and through this rhyme schemes the petrarchan sonnet and shakespeare sonnet which have a three quatrains and ends in a couplet like right in shakespeare and sonnets you can see three quatrains like a b a b c d c d e f e f these are the first second and three these are the three quatrains and ends in a couplet so this is a g g is a couplet so this rhyme scheme is called a shakespearean sonnet so that this is about the poetry of elizabethan age <coughs> now drama what kind of drama were written during this particular age so drama there are mainly comedies as well as there are tragedies also what are the main themes of this drama we know like revenge themes are the center theme or you can say the main theme during the elizabethan age comedy is used italian or you can say latin comedies as a source they mainly uh, take a source from the other writing comedies contain theme like love historical play and tragedy mainly used as uh, seneca as a model so you can say senecan play tragedies were mainly a melodramatic full of emotional speeches scenes and contained a great deal of stage right so if i ask you first comedy of english literature first tragedy of english literature what will be your answer so in english literature the first comedy is ralph royster doister it was written by nicholas odal and the first tragedy is gorbadak we can say it is a seneca play and it is mainly written by thomas norton and thomas sequel okay so the first comedy we considered as a ralph royster doister written by nicholas otal and the first tragedy is gorbadak it was written by thomas norton and thomas sequel right we all know i have already mentioned during the elizabethan age main theme of the drama is revenge plays we can see it in a hamlet uh, we also we have discussed about like uh, during the social scenario of the elizabethan age there are so many inventions like galileo we have seen copernic's invention right like the sun is the center of the universe but instead of this this uh, inventions peoples are superstitious they mainly believed in 
superstition, magic, they believe in witches, right? So, such kinds of themes we can see in our drama too, right? So, this is the drama of Elizabethan age. Sinecan play. So, Roman, who is a Roman dramatist? Mainly, he taught Elizabethan dramatists what to say. We all know, like Senecan play, it means it is a tragedy, right? Tragedy, it means how to say anything. Elizabethan dramatist took the elements of soliloquy from the Senecan play and what to say in a tense in a tragic situation and what kind of a tone it will be when you are tense, when you are angry, when you have a tragedy, right? So, these are the aspects, the dialogue, the form, the speech, the dialogue delivery we have learned from Senecan plays. Senecan plays contain element of flamboyant rhetoric, horror, morality and supernatural agencies that is ghost, right? We, I have also mentioned in our drama part like Hamlet, right? We, when we see Hamlet, when we read the story of a Hamlet, we have an idea about like they, uh, the people of Elizabethan age, they strongly believed in supernatural things too. When we read the story of the Spanish tragedy written by Thomas Kidd, we are confirmed that the, how superstitious people are living during this particular age. Now, um, university wits, what exactly it means university wits? So, first thing you have to keep in your mind, it is a pre-Shakespearean dramatist and in university wits, we can include Thomas Kidd, John Lilly, George Phil, Robert Green, Thomas Lord, Thomas Nash and Christopher Marlowe. These all writers associated with whether University of Cambridge or University of Oxford, right? The university wits contributed to the flowering of romantic comedy. So, mainly university wits, they are the pre-Shakespearean dramatists and they are mainly associated with the University of Cambridge or University of Oxford. So, and the Thomas Kidd mainly popularized Senecan tragedy what it is? The Spanish tragedy, right? Thomas Kidd. Now, during the Elizabethan age, we metaphysics for John Donne. Dr. Johnson used the term metaphysical from John Donne to a school of poets. Another time I repeat it, Dryden used the term metaphysics for John Donne, right? And Dr. Johnson used the term metaphysical from John Donne to a school of poetry. So, this is the chronology, right? Dryden, John Donne and after that, Dr. Johnson. Metaphysical poets were man of learning. They showcase their learning. They show acute resemblance in things apparently unlike. John Donne, oh, how many writers you can include in metaphysical poetry? So, John Donne, George Hubbard, Richard Crusher, Henry Vaughan, Abraham Cowley, Andrew Marvel, all these are the writers we can include it in metaphysical poetry, right? Now, mainly we are going to discuss literary features of Elizabethan age. What are the main literary features of Elizabethan age? So, the first one is abundance of output, revival of interest in Greek literature, you can say Renaissance, the new romanticism, spirit of independence. You can say you can include it as a individualism, right? So, the first one, abundance of output. Elizabethan age was a rich and literary production of all kinds of pamphlet and treatise were freely written mainly. A revival of interest in Greek literature, 
we have discussed in a renaissance right so study of greek literature brought a dazzling light into many dark places of intellect and each and every person became individual spirit of independence whosoever is their reign right whosoever is their master but each and every person start to think by themselves right so the spirit of creativeness and independence aroused during the age of elizabethan age another literary features translation development of drama popularity of poetry prose and novel right translations we know like tragedies right cynic and tragedies we are normally imitating the greek works so several important foreign books were translated into english development of drama during the elizabethan age made a, a swift and wonderful uh, leap into a maturity each and every writer starts to write a drama in excellent way whether whenever we are talking about elizabethan age first comes in our mind shakespeare so during the age of shakespeare or you can say elizabethan age drama reached its zenith into the hands of shakespeare and ben jonson popularity of poetry prose and novel during the elizabethan age prose was not given prominence because it was like a pamphlet and religious scriptures we can include in a prose so during the mainly elizabethan age we are more focusing on drama because uh, the dramas were written by shakespeare and ben jonson in a very classic manner so these are the prominent aspect of this particular age profound love for beauty in various forms john milton whenever you see john milton the first work comes in our mind is paradise lost the way he has written the imagination of john milton is great element of stateliness of manner in his poetry his subjects are stately and also his treatment seriousness in his poetry imagination is i have already said it's a splendid in paradise lost right so these are the main so in this session what we have discussed mainly we have discussed about political environment during the elizabethan age privy council parliament 13 members of privy council parliament divided into two parts mainly the upper house the lower house right the house of common you can say in the upper house we can include aristocratic people and bishops for the house of common there was a election right during the mainly social scenario of the elizabethan age we have discussed about the period of renaissance what is the exact meaning of renaissance rebirth reawakening how our writers imitate greek literature and they produce a classic work elizabethan poetry elizabethan drama in prose mainly it divided into two parts fiction non fiction in a fiction part we can include pamphlets as well as religious poetry and in a non fiction all the romances we can include it. love marriage chivalry right courage and all these aspects elizabethan poetry and for elizabethan drama elizabethan drama especially we are uh, shakespeare and ben jonson are very famous they have worked in a classic manner if when we see like uh, we have also discussed about uh, what kind of inventions happen during the elizabethan age copernic uh, announced that sun is the center of the universe yet during this particular age we know that the people of elizabethan age they are very superstitious they still believe in a magic so this kinds of their uh, uh, mindset 
we can see in the works of Shakespeare like Hamlet and Macbeth. We can see the supernatural elements. There, they believe the people believe in a magic, supernatural things. So that kind of representation we can see in their work too. So I hope you enjoyed this session. The historical aspect, parliament, uh, parliament of you can say political uh, advancement during this particular age, social scenario and literary features of the Elizabethan age. Thank you. Smart, yeah, yeah,